Ah, water levels. Everyone's favourite. Easy fluid controls, enemies that are simple to avoid, and you can spend as much time as you want swimming around to your heart's content. I hate water levels. They're slow, they're boring, and they're infuriatingly painful to navigate. Yet so many games have them. Why? Maybe game devs just really love fish. Or more likely it's a way to incorporate a different environment and mix up the gameplay. The thing is, there's nothing inherently wrong with water levels, it's just the way they're often implemented. But what makes a water level so frustrating and what can be done to not only make them tolerable, but perhaps even the best part of the game? Because as crazy as it sounds, there are actually some really fun water levels out there. Oh yeah, I'm a freaking dolphin! For clarity, even though I'll use the term water levels a lot, I'm also going to include open world games that have swimming mechanics in them. When you first splash down in that refreshing looking water, it's like suddenly diving into a giant puddle of mud. You're now twice as slow, it takes 12 years to make a simple adjustment, and if you miss your objective, you've got to do a three point turn just to turn around again. Super Mario 64 is a great game. Well, it's all right. I think it's a bit overrated, but Die Die Docks is pure nostalgia for a lot of people. But let's be honest, the only good thing about this level is the soundtrack. From a realism perspective, I get it. You move a lot slower in water than on land, except I can tell you for certain that I'm able to rotate underwater a lot faster than this. But also, screw realism. You're a talking bear that plays the banjo with a red crested brigo in your backpack fighting an evil witch that kidnapped your sister. But I guess being able to swim underwater easily is where the line is drawn. It's an absolute slog trying to swim through most levels. The rapid high flying bouncing pace you once had on land is now gone and you're left with a character that's just eaten one too many mince pies after Christmas dinner and is struggling to make it to the couch. If you're gonna lose something by going under water, then something else needs to be gained. You're slower? Okay fine, but now you have some water jet spin move you didn't have before or something. It could work, and it's definitely better than what most games do, which is just to not do that at all. This issue isn't even exclusive to water levels either. Just having ice on the ground sends my frustration meter through the roof. It's like playing a driving game with the worst handling in the world, but at least this is better than just having a level that's identical to land, except you walk really slowly, like in the 2000 RPG Skies of Arcadia. Oh my god! When you've spent the first part of the game getting used to the controls in a less challenging environment, only for them to get shaken up all of a sudden with no reduction in difficulty for you to get used to them, it's a pretty jarring experience. Call me crazy, but as someone who values movement more than any other mechanic, I'd argue that the best option is to just not have rubbish movement at all. It's much more fun to be able to glide through the water like a dolphin than be a slow bumbling buffoon bumping into walls, even if I do have a new underwater move. And there's one game that does this amazingly well. Oh yeah, you know we're talking about Ori. Ori 1, Ori 2, take your pick, they're both amazing. These games are so good they even make underwater sections fun, but I'd say that one does it slightly better than the other. The underwater sections in Ori and the Blind Forest are decent. You are slower and you do have an air meter earlier in the game, which we'll get to later, oh boy. But you definitely have a lot more maneuverability compared to being on land than most games, and with the way combat is designed you just mash that X button and hit nearby enemies. But Ori and the Will of the Wisps said, hey, screw being slow, that sucks, I want to go fast. So they did it. They just they just did it. They made Ori go Meow. It's just so easy and intuitive swimming around everywhere. You can turn quickly, go up, down, left, right, forward, back, no problem. And the transition from water to air is so seamless, I don't know when the swimming ends and the gliding begins. Then they threw in an underwater dash ability for good measure. Swimming is so fast in this game that even have a time trial set in an underwater section. Absolute legends. I've never had more fun swimming in a game. Except for maybe one other, but we'll get to that later. Those tightly woven corridors with traps sprouting everywhere are suddenly way more fun when you can actually move properly. When you have a game designed like this, it means you can make more interesting and challenging levels, because you're not limited by rubbish mechanics. Move, move, move! Ah. The easier it is to move underwater, the more dangerous a level can be. New enemies with all sorts of attacks could be implemented if you had the ability to dodge them all at lightning pace and give them a taste of their own medicine. But more often than not, you're left with levels full of slow moving enemies and awkward obstacles with slightly more open spaces if you're lucky to account for your new handling. But even then, it's still not enough. Even when you do get past the obstacles or kill an enemy, it's so much less satisfying when done at one miles per hour. I tend to find games that revolve around combat and traversing obstacles much more fun at a higher pace. I'm all for a much slower and mellower experience, but not if it's in a game that otherwise isn't because it's all about combat and obstacles. I mean, even puzzles have their limit when it comes to pacing. Which reminds me, we can't talk about water levels without talking about the most infamous water level of all. 
Oh yeah, you knew it was coming. One of the greatest games ever made, a masterpiece, a visionary triumph that'll live on for centuries. And it still had to feature one of the worst water levels ever made. The only reason this game hasn't got 100 on Metacritic is because of this level. It's like Nintendo took the handbook of how not to make a water level and then perfectly executed every page. Ignoring the fact that a water level was placed into a game where the protagonist has the underwater grace of a poodle, but the fact that in order to traverse through the level you have to open up the menu and equip or unequip your iron boots is one of the most painful gaming experiences I've ever had. It's not like you do this once or twice either, it's in basically every room. And we haven't even touched on the painfully boring puzzles, the monotonous level design and the constant changing of water levels that lead you to search the same rooms over and over again just to find that one key. Stupid level. And just as the water becomes ankle deep, the game is suddenly a million times better. I mean look at that mini boss fight versus Dark Link. <laughs> But at least you had a blue tunic that allowed you to breathe underwater. Because in a lot of games, <laughs> air meters traumatized me as a kid. I genuinely avoided playing Clanker's Cavern in Banjo Kazooie because of how scared I was to drown. I had no problem battling ogres or fighting whatever these things were. But that thing. It scares me. And remember this drowning music in Sonic? How could that not terrify kids? If the movement mechanics weren't frustrating enough, having to interrupt your play session to swim to the surface and then go right back to where you were is outright silly. It keeps breaking the already slow flow of the game. And don't forget about the anxiety of making sure you have enough time to make it. <gasps> oh thank god. Having ways to get air underwater is a better solution, but depending on how it's implemented, it can still suck. If they're part of an interesting corridor you need to travel through anyway, it can heighten the excitement of having to get through quickly. But again, if the movement is slow and stiff, it's just another painful collectible to awkwardly swim towards. Even though both Ori games have an air meter, which you can get rid of by unlocking abilities, places to get air are often located along a route you're already going. However, the swimming mechanics in Ori are good enough that going up for air is nowhere near as painful. But if in doubt, I say have the character breathe underwater. Screw realism, you're a talking blue hedgehog that runs a Mach 1. But if you need some reason for them to breathe underwater, throw in a scuba suit or a breathing bubble helmet or something. When games are mostly set on land, the parts that are underwater just scream afterthought. It's only a small part of the game, so why bother spending time making sure the mechanics work well and it's enjoyable? Well in that case, don't bother with a water level at all. Or at least make a level where water is only ankle deep, or it's just in the vicinity. There are a lot of ways to incorporate water into a game without even adding swimming mechanics. Like in Sunset Overdrive, where you can grind on water and do this. Or you could be like Giant Squid Studios, who had the audacity to make an entire game one giant water level. With a game like Abzu, where its entire premise is set underwater, you better make sure the swimming mechanics are good. Uh, obviously. And boy does Abzu do this. The way you move through the water is unlike anything I've ever seen in a game. It feels more like flying a plane than swimming, and with 3D games, that's exactly as it should be. Even if the diver is upside down in some weird orientation, you just effortlessly turn where you want to and it auto orients. It's beautiful to watch. You can go slow, you can go fast, you can do loops or um, uh, roll into a ball. The controls are so good it's no issue going through the narrow corridors. There is auto steering at parts which does help tremendously though. Whether that makes the game too easy is debatable, but I don't think people are playing Abzu for a challenging experience. This might be one of the only games that is more fun to play in water than on land. I think during the entire playthrough I bumped into maybe one wall. There are some obstacles in the game, but they're pretty straightforward to navigate around. Because the whole game is set in water, the world is designed with that in mind, where the reefs are spacious, giving you loads of room for error as you swim around. There are still games with slightly more agile characters that can swim, albeit I'd say in only 2D games, but that doesn't matter in this world, because you're supposed to explore, take in the sights of the flora and fauna, and not worry about going down an exact narrow path. I felt an overwhelming sense of tranquility when playing Abzu. I spent a lot of time just swimming around, looking at all the sea creatures, and finding shouts. Oh no, a collectible. Ignore it, Ryan. It can't hurt you anymore. Just look at this dude. Look at its beautiful, stupid face. What even is it? Ah, it's a sunfish. <gasps> the game is fun and educational. As I was making this video, I noticed a pattern. Most of the bad water levels and swimming mechanics seem to be in older games. It seems that similar to other elements of gameplay design, swimming mechanics have also improved over the years, which gives me hope for the future of water in games. Maybe in the future it'll be less frustrating when I see a water segment coming up. Maybe we should embrace the water levels of the future. Or maybe you just throw some water in your game and have players die the moment they touch it. Screw realism, you're a squid who can't swim.